Gamers, today we're gonna cover the Rus Guide. I've done English, French, and Mongol for season two guide, and I'm about to do a Rus Guide. Just so you guys know, at the end of this, we're gonna go through matchups and what to focus on. And for this guide, for the season two guide, I'm gonna show you a similar build to the season one, but not really, and you'll see what I mean. Just so you guys know, because a lot of people ask me this, is the season one guide still viable? Yes, for Rus, it's literally nothing has changed. From, from season one to season two, the boar, a uh, guide where you go stables into four archer ranges still works 100%. It is not weaker, it is not better. Maybe it's even a bit better because Rams are 250 wood, but that build is still very much viable. So for this season, I decided to do a much different build. Uh, just so you guys have options, you know, whether you wanna all in and fiddle or play, you know, more macro oriented. So what I'm gonna show you today is two TC build with Rus that is very, 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 it very much has a lot of variety to it. You can do so many things and you'll see what I mean when we get to it. So first things first, when you start with Roost, you're gonna make another scout. You're gonna make, uh, take, put six villagers on food, take two, make hunting cabin, house, and lumber camp. Um, you wanna get hunting cabin first cause you wanna make a third scout. And this is the only CV you will go with three scouts. Sometimes I go four scouts, but uh, I mentioned this in season one guide if you're struggling with keeping up with multiple scouts then three scouts is more than fine and try to put them in different control groups and send them different ways. So when you play Rus, the way you want to send your scouts is, in my opinion, one of the best ideas and that's something a lot of high level Rus players do. The first two scouts you send towards your opponent and you try to get their deer and with the third scout, you go for your own deer and around your base uh, to kind of get sheep and everything else. So this scout is supposed to go all the way south, but I run into deer. And what you do in that situation, you just kill it because you don't want your scouts to cross the same paths as the other scouts. You want to be as efficient with your scouts as possible. And if you run into a wolf, if you run into a sheep, you run into a deer, just pick them up. That's the best way. So for example here, I run into deer, I instantly pick them up and I start killing them. You don't go for it after. You want to make sure you get them straight away before your opponent denies you. Here, if you see a wolf, you want to tag the wolf so that the opponent, um, you know, doesn't come and pick up the wolf. Because once you attack the wolf, it will follow you all the way, um, you know, to your base, right? And that's how you kill the wolves. You don't want to kill the wolf here. You want to basically pick it up go get more sheep wolves and then drag it to your TC and let your TC uh, kill it. Now, one thing to note, uh, I don't know if you guys are aware of this or not, but when you're attacking deer, uh, it takes, it will shoot three times because of the delay in the bows and the death animation. So once you've shot the second time, the deer will die, but then it will go into animation of dying and your scout will shoot the third time. So if you have extra APM or you got nothing better to do, then shoot each deer twice and not three times. Because if you shift kill all the deer, you will sh fire another arrow per deer. But that's, you know, for a bit higher level, for a pega level, just shift kill the deer and you'll be good to go. Another thing is, if you're making a, a scout out of a hunting cabin, you can shift kill it on the deer and the moment it gets made and is out, we'll go and kill one deer at a time. So what's next? One thing with Rus is you're gonna only have two villagers on food on wood for now, and you're gonna rally all the other ones on food until you start aging up. And because of this, and because of the faster gathering rate for uh, food, uh, Rus will run out of sheep very, very fast, which is very why it's very important to have one of your scouts getting the sheep near your TC, and why you don't want to run away with all three scouts too far away, because you're gonna run out of food very, very fast. So right here, I get another deer pack. See? Three shots. Look at this. Three shots. And it's wasting a lot of DPS. So obviously, sometimes you won't have the APM or, or you know, means to do it. But if you are looking at the scout, just so you know, like now, see? I shot twice and I moved on. Nothing wrong with shooting it three times if you got other stuff to do. But try to, to, try to do two. Uh, here, there's still two deer remaining, but first what I do is I pick up the wolves so that the opponent doesn't tag them. And scouts in Season 2 have a lot uh, a lot less region, so be very careful. 
my god, that is fucking loud. Be very careful to not lose your scout to wolves, because the scouts have much uh, lower regen, so they're not going to be as uh, unbeatable as they used to. And once you get enough scouts, um, or once you get enough wolves, if you have like four or five wolves, just, just drag them to your TC, because you don't want to lose them. Each wolf gives you 25 gold and 25 bounty. So, that's all the scouting explained. So now I'm going to go into uh, build. Sometimes this will happen when you run out of sheep. I only have one sheep, so there's two villagers that are AFK. If that is the case, just run them onto the wood and just put them on the wood line until more sheep arrive. Like, don't let them just do nothing here, okay? Um, there we go. And now I put them back. And you can see I have 11 villagers and food. And the reason why you don't need any gold with Rus is because um, you get gold from killing the animals. One thing I forgot to mention, once you finish hunting cabin, house, and lumber camp, the next 50 wood you get from these two villagers, you're gonna get wheelbarrow. So Roos gets wheelbarrow extremely, extremely quickly. And it's because, look, I've spent 150 gold on wheelbarrow and I still have 301 gold for age up, right? So the moment you, have, the moment you build hunting cabin, house, and lumber camp, the next 50 wood you gather, you're gonna spend it on wheelbarrow and you will have, uh, what's it called? You will have enough gold because obviously all the bounty and stuff. Once we age up, we will start splitting the workers to other resources. So I'm building a house because I'm 17 out of 20, which is normal, you know, don't get uh, supply blocked. I'm bringing more wolves here. And now what I usually want to do with the scouts is first of all, make sure you have your whole map revealed. And you can put one scout near your opponent's base and see what they're doing. If they're going aggressive, if they're going second TC, uh, if, you know, going stables, barracks, or archer ranges. And this is very important so that you know how to react, okay? So now we're going to age up. And I'm going to put six villagers on the age up. And I'll explain why. So I'm putting six villagers on age up, which is going to leave me six on food. And I'm going to take two from the food, put them on wood, and then rally onto the wood. So, in order to produce villagers continuously, you need only four villagers. You don't need more. So, that's why every other villager that's not building a landmark, I'm going to put on wood plus four on food to produce villagers. Because I'm going to need uh, wood for that second TC. Now, the reason why I'm aging up with six is because I want to age up really fast. Because, uh, and you want to age up with Golden Gate because you can exchange resources at a favorable rate. So I'm going to spend 200 gold and I'm going to purchase 200, uh, 300 stone with it so I, that I can make the second TC. And with this build, it's very important you get your bounty because if you don't have enough bounty or if you don't have enough gold, you will simply not have uh, enough gold to, to purchase the stone. If that is the case, you can not put 2-3 villagers on gold and get that little bit of extra gold. Because like I said, once you reach feudal, you will need 200 gold in order to purchase stone and, and then instantly make a TC. And that's one of the advantages with Rus over other sieves. You don't need to mine stone right now, you can just buy it from the golden gate. Alright, so this is where the, this is what you do every game. So, so far, this is what you do every game. Nothing's gonna change from game to game. This is the standard. Now, this is where a lot of variety comes in and where Rus, kind of like Mongol, have so, so many options. This depends on the map. This depends on the sieve. This depends on your style. It, what you can do now is there's two options. One is you go straight into second TC, right? You make no units. You just go second TC. Or number two, you make stables. And because you see I have 200 wood. So you make stables and you make a knight or two that you use to keep your opponent in your base, harass them, and allow yourself to get the boar. If you're like, if I'm playing against English or maybe if I'm playing against French, opening stables is very nice because it's going to allow you to fight the French knights or it's going to allow you to keep the English in their base for a bit until you can get your second TC available. If you do do that, if you do go for an extra... Uh, for a night or two, you are going to need to mine gold. So if you decide to go with that route, I decide uh, I would advise you to put three, four, five villagers on gold and put an extra villager or two on food 
This will delay your TC, but against some sieves, it's not a bad idea to do so. If you're playing against more passive sieves, like HRE or Delhi, because Delhi can't really be super aggressive uh, this early on, even though Delhi can go horsemen, so you can go stables. But if you're playing against China or Abbasid, uh, you can just go straight into TC. So I'm gonna show you as if we were playing against a more passive sieve, how you do the build. So. You can see I got a lot, 14 workers of wood, and my goal is to get about 300 wood and then start moving. These wolves came out of nowhere here. So, I got enough gold from all the animal killing, so I don't need to mine gold. But again, reminder, if you do need a little bit of extra gold, uh, you can take three villagers and put them there. Another thing that I want to mention is there are two possible uh, spots for your TC. Now, the best spot for your TC is on the boar, in my opinion, against most sims, but there are exceptions. If you are getting all in the lot on the ladder, I would not advise you to put forward TC like this one. This is very close to the opponent, right? So I wouldn't advise it. But if the boar was like somewhere here on the top side, I would say go for the uh, TC on boar because it's 2000 bonus food and insane gathering rate that uh, you're going to get so, so much value out of it. In this specific game, if this was a regular game, second TC would probably be the best here uh, with these spawns that I have, because if I make a TC on this deer pack that's right here, this is very close, and that TC kind of protects the, the deer pack in the back and the berries in the back. So I could make a wall there, I could make a small wall here to TC and small wall here, and this would be all secured with minimal investment. The reason, so if, if I, this was a normal game, like I said, I would put my TC there uh, because it's covering so much stuff. And another important part is your second TC should be somewhere where you can quickly rally your workers to. So what I mean by that is what you'll see in this game. I'm gonna make a TC here, but I don't have anything to, to rally my workers to because the closest thing I can rally it is gold. There's no food around. So the workers have to walk quite a bit. So that's something to keep into consideration. The only reason why I went uh, for the boar TC this game, to just show you how to effectively kill the boar and the options you can do with it. So if you wanted to play more defensive uh, or you're scared of all in, like I said, put the TC on the deer, your deer obviously. If you want to all in off of this, or if you are confident that you can hold it, like this would be a great TC spot versus Delhi because you're protecting the sacred site and you got the boar. So again, a lot of variety, what civ you're playing against uh, and so on and so forth. Like if you're playing against French and you want to go castle, then, uh, you know, TC more defensive makes sense. If you want to fight with French and feudal, then forward TC is good because it's going to provide you like a, like a, uh, you know, retreat point, and you can build your production buildings there. When I have about 300 wood, uh, I think I sent them a little bit too late, but when you have about 300 wood, you're gonna send your villagers to the boar or to the uh, deer, wherever you wanna make it. If you're going for the boar, make sure you have a scout with full HP there. And one thing I wanted to mention, let's say I had 130 gold right now. I don't need to mine gold because the boar itself gives 75 gold. So that's something to remember. Even if you have 130 gold, that's enough to buy stone. So only if you have like, after getting wheelbarrow and AG Gap, if you have like 50 gold, then you're gonna need to mine a little bit of gold because the board itself gives 75. But if you're going for the deer pack and you have 130 gold, you're gonna need to mine some gold. All right, so workers are coming. So what you do, I explained this in the previous video as well. You're gonna pull the deer with the scout, and once the scout is close to the deer, you're gonna move the workers in melee range and right-click the boar. If you right-click from here, the workers are gonna use their bows to kill it, which does way, way less damage. So you wanna make sure the scout is the closest, and then the villagers go around the boar, right-click it, and that's it. Once you kill it, I bought the stone, you're gonna have two tickets available right now. You buy the stone and you instantly plop down a TC and you ship to the workers onto the boar. Now, this is the part where there's more variety. And don't look at variety as like a scary thing. Like you don't have to think about this every game. Like, oh my God, do I go for stable? Do I go for TC? This is something that you can try both ways. And this is something that you can just figure out what works for you. 
and you do that every game. So you can't do the same thing every game. You just got to pick what's good for you. So the reason why I say this is where more variety comes in is, do you remember the season one boar build where you get the boar and you all in off of it? Well, the meta in Age of Empires 4 has changed a bit and you can actually do that exact same thing right now just off of TC. So what you can do right now is take these four villagers, yeah, move them to woodline, make a tower so you get more wood income, and then you can just make stables and four archer ranges here and all in off of this. From here on out, it would be exactly like the boar build. You would make production and you would all in off of it. What is the benefit of adding a TC? You're less all in and it's kind of like, technically you're all in, but you're putting a crap ton of pressure, but you have economy to back it up. So it's not game over if you fail. You still have two TCs and you will probably be ahead in workers because you're putting a uh, pressure on your opponent and trying to kill stuff. That's option number one, right? You can add production and treat this TC just like a tower. Just like a tower in, in the season one build and just attack and put pressure, get blacksmith, you know, make rams, whatever. Option number two is the fast castle rushing. And again, this depends on your style and this depends on which civ you're playing against. This TC will be able to defend itself until you get to castle. Because every time opponent tries to charge in with a knight or longbows, you can just garrison in it and do damage. And eventually they're going to take too much damage on their units or start losing them. So you don't need to, this is a very safe spot as long as you get the TC up. And remember, you can go earlier stables to help you get that TC up if you need it. The great part about Roost rushing castle, let's say your opponent is being extremely aggressive right now and they're around your base and you can't mine gold. That's not that big of a deal because you can sell your resources and get gold that way. So your workers will still be around the tower that you're going to build and around your TC and around your TC. So it's very hard to push Roos if they want to skip units and rush castle uh, because of this. But if you can, uh, I would advise putting like four or five workers on gold uh, so that you can slowly, uh, you know, get enough gold and food to age up. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a tower, a wooden fortress, so I get more wood. And I'm going to pull some villagers from the wood line. Again, assuming we're going castle rushing from here on out. And I'm going to put a total of five or six workers on wood. We have 13 on food, which are eight on the board. And then we're going to rally the main TC onto the gold. Um, if you don't have enough sheep here or you don't have enough food remember not only you can sell food or wood for gold but you can also buy 150 food for 100 gold so if you have like 10 workers on gold and you have more than 600 gold you can just buy food so this golden gate from here on out serves as a economy balance tool you're not supposed to wait for it to reach 10 uses and then use it on something it doesn't matter if you're playing in feudal or castle or imperial Whenever you have like too much wood, but you need gold, just sell some wood, like sell 300 wood, you're going to get 450 gold. Or if you lack food to a job, just buy food. So try to learn to use Golden Gate as a, as a balance of your resources. Once you got aggressive early against Abbasid or Wedge Raid, well, just like I, I just explained, you can go, but the build is the same like the boar build. So I'm not going to explain the whole process again, because it's literally identical from that point which is why I'm explaining castle rushing now because uh, I don't want to do the same build for two guys. If you're interested in the boar all in, except you want to do it with DC, check the season one uh, guide. So I'm going to be gathering wood and you don't need to spend wood on anything right now. Um, by the way, another thing that I wanted to mention, if you're getting all in, you can also just make production and defend, right? And this is the same for every sieve. There's no how many stables they make or how many barracks they make or how many archer ranges they make. If the opponent is French and he's making knight archer, you go knight, you, you can go pure knight, right? Because knights beat both knights and um, archers. If the opponent is French and they're going for spearman knights, you go for, um, you can go for spearman archer. You can go for knight archer as well. It depends what your opponent is doing and you can react to it. So if you want to fight and feel against your opponent, that's fine too. Like you don't need to do the all in or go castle. You can go you know, extended feudal fights. So what my goal here right now is, 
I have seven on gold. And remember the thing that I mentioned earlier, you want to have a second TC rallied to the closest resource. So I don't want to rally this TC over here because that's a huge long distance to cross. So I'm just rallying it on this gold. Obviously, if I was getting attacked, I wouldn't rally it there because the villagers would just die. So that's something that you gotta figure out. Like if I had a if I had a TC here, right, and I was on this deer, I would rally them onto the deer. And once I finished the deer, I would just rally them onto the bears because that is the closest. You don't want to rally workers from here all the way to the gold. So that's something to consider. And this is the same for every sieve. So right here, you'll see I'll have a resource imbalance and I got two tickets. I'll have too much gold and not enough food. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy food and propel myself to castle a bit quicker. There it is. I just spent one ticket. I bought 150 food for 100 gold. And now I'm going to age up with about 10, 12 workers is good number. From food, you're going to age up to Abbey of the Trinity. Now, where do you go uh, Kremlin? You, you never go Kremlin. It sucks. When do you go Abbey and when do you go for a uh, high trade house? So Abbey of the Trinity is for those that don't know is a monastery. And Warrior Monks are half the cost and it has unique upgrades. High Trade House uh, generates gold like Hunting Cabin, but the values increase 400, spawns deer every 60 seconds, and villagers can drop off food. If you're playing, a, like let's say you're in a situation where you were the one going to castle first, you always want to go Abbey of the Trinity because you want to get the relics first. And Abbey of the Trinity is going to allow you to get those relics faster and cheaper. So you're going to go Abbey if you're aging up first or if you're playing against civs that don't care about relics too much like English or French or so on and so forth. If you're playing against HRE, for example, or Delhi and they get to castle first and you think you're not going to be able to get relics or maybe you're only going to get one or two relics, it's not a bad idea to go for high trade house in that situation. Like if this wood line was a bit closer like here, you can put a pretty fat high trade house here and get about 200 gold a minute, which is equivalent to two relics. So if opponent took three relics and you only think you can get one maybe because they're going to get fourth as well, it's good to make a high trade house, get the one relic by making a monastery, and then you have income from the high trade house of two relics. So then it's almost equal to your opponent because there's not much point to make Abbey of the Trinity if you're not going to get three or more relics. So that's something to think about and that depends from game to game, but most of the time you're going to go Abbey of the Trinity. So from here on out, I got about 500 wood. I get good food income and I'm going to leave about 10 villagers on gold. And again, this is where the variety comes in. So what do you want to do now? Well, that depends on you. If you're getting extremely, extremely all in by English or whatever sim and they just got like spearmen longbows or men at arm longbows, men at arm archers, what I would do here is I would plop down three barracks, make a blacksmith for plus one range armor, and I would make men at arms to defend that. That is what I go, go for if I'm getting all in by civs that don't have knights. If I'm playing against civs that do have knights, I would go double or even triple stable and just mass produce knights, except you're gonna have castle knights versus their feudal knights. If the game is normal, like, you know, opponent is poking, but they're not necessarily all inning, or maybe they're also rushing castle, you're about to see what I would do. So I'm going double stable, double archer range. So you almost always want to go for uh, cavalry in the current meta of AoE4 because it gives you so much map control. There's a video that is released on my YouTube channel. Uh, it's, it talks about, it's the Get Good with Beastie series and it talks with map control and why it's so important. And you'll realize why you want to go for cavalry base style that is more, uh, uh, you know, that is faster, more... We can maneuver more across the map and harass because making like 10 spears at this point is very slow and you can kind of outmaneuver them and, and get around them, right? So I'm going to throw down two stables, two archer ranges, and you want to open with horse archers and knights. Uh, you want to open with some knights and horse archers. Now, you don't want to necessarily stay on that comp the whole game because if the opponent has like 40 spears, he's going to mow you down, right? 
But the, the reason why this is a good thing to open with is because you're going to get the map control. You're going to have a kind of like a death squad going around protecting your monks from getting the relics. And you can also harass your food uh, opponent's food economy while you're doing that or deny the relics or whatever else. And you have this TC that's going to serve you as a little tower. So it works out great, right? Technically, you can go, like I said, men at arm and crossbows if you want, but that is much slower. And the higher you go in ELO, it, it will be less and less efficient. Especially because in, in lower leagues, people don't know how to deal with knights, uh, you know, too well. So it's going to be pretty good for you. And horse archers are very good at picking off spearmen. So the idea right now is to start getting the map control. Start walling off your food sources, right? Start walling off your part of the map, which you'll see a little bit later. I had a wall here that's going to cover all the food sources in this side of the map. And to harass your opponent a little bit and figure out what they're doing. And once again, scouting is very important. And if your opponent is committed to um, mass cavalry, then you don't really need horse archers, right? You can just go cavalry yourself or you can go stables barracks and then go spearman cavalry, right? Uh, one of the popular unit comps that has come out in season two with all sieves is spearman horseman or spearman knight because both opponents kind of want to go knights or, or horsemen to harass but then this makes no sense to make archers so then both players make spearmen so then it turns into spearmen horsemen spearmen knight war something like that right so you can do that too it depends on you it depends on what the opponent is doing i can't tell you do this every game no matter what happens you gotta scout that that's rts so which relics do you pick up first um this also depends what state in the game uh, the game is, right? So, if you're getting all in from this side, right? Let's say the opponent is pushing this side. You don't want to get this relic because you're going to run through his units, right? So what you can do is you have the option of getting the four other relics on the top side of the map. Whichever one you want. So it depends a lot on what the opponent is doing, where their army is. So if the opponent's army is around this side, right? Around the middle side you don't want to risk losing a first monk by getting this relic that's all the way to the left side you're going to get for the safe ones you go for this one you go for the top ones in the perfect case scenario you want to go for the farthest relics first to take them away from your opponent and to kind of leave your safe ones for last because those are going to be the easy ones to get but if you know you're prevented from doing so if the opponent has units there or something then just go for the safe relics. As long as you get relics, that's good. How does your worker distribution look at this point? You wanna have about 20, 25 on food. You don't need more uh, for, for this production. 20, 25 is pretty good. You wanna have 10 on gold, and it depends what you wanna go for next, where you're gonna rally your workers. You wanna have about 10 on wood as well. So if you want to go into siege play, right from here, you want to go into siege. Um, you're going to go for more. You're going to rally one of your TCs onto the wood line because you're going to need more and more wood. If you're making pure knights and nothing else, then you want to rally at least one of your TCs onto the gold and one of the TCs onto the food. If you're making spearmen horsemen, you don't need a lot of gold. The relics will pretty much provide all the gold you need. So you can only leave like three, five workers on gold. And the relics will give you enough gold income to get the upgrades, uh, economy or uh, army upgrades. If you want to go for Sacred Side Victory, which is something I like to do with Rus, I rally one of my TCs onto the stone and one of my other TCs onto the wood line. So a good uh, play style to do, which is I would suggest because it's fairly uh, easy to execute, but it's very hard to deal with. So. What you want to do in this situation, if you want to go for this style, is you're going to take the relics and then you're going to capture three sacred sites. And your goal is to put three keeps on three sacred sites, have cavalry that's going to roam around. You know, you can harass your opponent or you can quickly jump from sacred site to another, defending your sacred sites. And then you go siege behind it. And if that's something you want to do, then having one TC on wood, one TC on stone is perfect uh, until you have about 10, 15 workers on stone. If you want to make more units and you don't want to make keeps, then obviously don't have any villagers on stone. You can go more villagers on food, get more food resources, add more production and just keep 
amassing units. And this works for all the sieves, but especially with, I would say with Rus in this situation, because there are that many options. There are playstyles where you also go for mass horse archer, which is also viable. As you can see, a lot of things are viable. So if you're going horse archer, like pure horse archer, nothing else, obviously you don't need gold. They cost food and wood. So you want one TC on food, one TC on wood. And it's a good rule of thumb to follow when you're kind of uh, organizing your resources. And remember, whenever like these uh, supplies available, aka we call them tickets, that you can trade resources for. If you ever have too much wood, like let's say I put 20 on wood, but I'm not going for siege accidentally. Just pull 10 off of wood, send them to deer, and then sell some wood for the gold, right? Just rebalance your economy. That's what the golden gate is for. And that's how you should uh, use it. So this Rus guide, while it does show a build order, it's mostly to explain and, and make you understand how the adjustments uh, in the game should be done, what you should be scouting, and when and how you should be transitioning to things. In Age of Empires 4, just like in a lot of RTS games, every game is different. And uh, while you can go for one play style, yeah, like you can just say, I'm gonna go Knights, Horse Archers every game, that's fine. Uh, but then you need to learn how to deal with Spearman Horsemen, you need to learn how to deal with you know, Crossbow Spear and so on and so forth. Um, and sometimes you just need to transition. So you'll see in a second here, I'm gonna start walling off here and just kind of getting more and more map control and securing my resources. Uh, once your initial bore expires, if you did go for bore, remember you could just go to the other bore and you can just build a wooden fortress and upgrade it so it protects your uh, villagers. Now, that is it for the guide. Let's check the individual matchups and I'll give you guys a quick rundown on what to focus on and what to pay attention uh, while you're playing Roos. It's funny because the game is developing in such a way, by the way, that like there, there's still the all-ins. The all-ins in, in AUE4 are very straightforward. You know, you do certain villagers on this resource, certain villagers on that resource, and you mass unit. But if you want to go in castle or higher, you have to learn how to adapt. Is it worth going for boar versus farms? Yes, farms for Rus are not good. Remember, no matter what's, uh, well, I'm not gonna say no matter what city you play, there are some exceptions, but with Rus, you wanna make sure you drain all the food sources and at least one boar, so all the berries, all the deer on your side, all the sheep, and at least one boar, and then go into farms. You don't want to go to farms super early because that will stop your castle progression, that will stop your unit production, so you want to make sure you get all as much of food from the map as possible and then go into the farms. Let's start with Rus versus English. Uh, Rus versus English is, um, I would say, pretty good for Rus because it's very hard for English to put pressure early on. English has very short timing where they can do some longbow pressure and maybe delay your second TC or something like that. But the moment you place your second TC, you're going to slow down the English quite a lot and even if they go for an all-in if you just go straight to castle you're going to be in that situation where i said earlier where you can just make three barracks and then you go men at arms in castle and just overwhelm english so i would say this matchup is very focused on whether english can delay your second tc or not and remember you can just go stables and delay their push a bit while you get your second tc probably would not advise to put forward tc against english just put it you know where your deer are somewhere in the back. In castle, you will have pretty big advantage because English castle isn't great. Uh, you can definitely go the stable archer ranges, just pure cavalry for a while and go for the sacred side style and try to win with that because you can outmast them quite a bit because you're going to have uh, economy advantage, you're going to have relic advantage, you have more wood chopping because of the wooden fortress so you can outmast them in siege and that can be your victory condition. Uh, late game, I would say it can go either way. It used to be English, uh, I, I would always say English, you know, beats uh, Rus, but the meta has shifted to quite a lot melee units and English is very focused on making men at arms and Streltsy melt them pretty, pretty hard. And Rus is one of the few civs that does have insane passive gold income in the late game, like English with farms. So you can definitely fight English in the late game. Overall, I would say it's probably a little bit favored to Rus, but it's winnable from both sides. Probably your best timing is in Castle though. Mongols, I think this is a pretty tough matchup for Mongols. And the reason for that is 
Uh, if Mongol tower rushes, it doesn't really work because Rus arrives in feudal very quickly. So Rus, if you're getting tower rush, you can just go, you know, six workers age up into archer range and then you just clean up spearmen and, and workers building the towers and that's it. You just go into the second TC and you're feeling really good. Uh, in super late game, Rus has pretty big advantage because of Streltsy. In castle, that's Mongol's best age and the Mongol's best chance is probably to do siege push with siege engineering. The problem is... If you get a keep as Rus, Mongol needs to build trebuchets and you slow them down so hard and trebuchets from Mongols really suck badly uh, because they're weaker, even though they're cheaper, they are weaker and they're ju you're just gonna slow down their push so much. And basically, if you go for second TC, Mongol can't really say, okay, I'm gonna go second TC too because their second TC takes way, way longer to kind of kick in. And even if you do go second TC, you're going to be able to reach castle faster. So one thing to be careful of is they can tower rush your wood uh, on start and they can tower rush your food. So if you're going for the boar, if you're going for TC on boar, they can tower rush the boar. So that's something to be careful of. How do I explain this? If, if this is boar, this is TC, right? Imagine TC is on the right. You can see in the chat, boar is B and then Mongol comes here and puts a tower. Uh, what you can do is just use the eight villagers on the boar and make a tower here. And you basically completely block the boar from both sides from being tower rushed, right? Because if uh, Mongol does that, it is a win for them. So you can, but you can prevent that super easily. Like they won't be able to make the tower faster with one, two villagers than you will with eight. So it's an easy fix, right? Uh, they can also try to tower rush your like deer food, so be careful of that. And the worst part for Mongols is they're a raiding sieve, and um, Rus has most of the resources like under a wooden fortress or under a TC, and it's very hard for Mongols to do any damage. And if you both rush into castle, you and Mongols rush into castle, then you're gonna have all the freedom to do whatever the fuck you want, and you're probably going to actually get to castle first because of your better economy, and then you are entering castle, let's say same time, with two TC, with monastery done. And if Mongol goes to take relics, you're gonna be able to take more relics. You have keeps, you're gonna have knights just like they do. And if you go for archery ranges, you can also go for knight crossbows to just completely shut down their lancers. And from then on, your lead will just keep growing uh, into the game. It is a rough matchup for Mongols. Uh, versus French. Uh, French is a sieve that will most likely try to be aggressive. So what you can do is instead of opening with stables against French, like I suggested earlier, like once you get to feudally make a stable and then make a knight, you can do that. But you can also make a barracks and make like five spears and to go with those five spears to make a second TC. So that's also an option and it's going to keep you a lot safer. Uh, you will be harassed quite a bit with the knights at your boar TC or your deer TC, but you can just garrison and ungarrison constantly and try to prevent uh, French from killing you in that way. Versus French, your game will most likely be based heavily, heavily in feudal. So you have the, the three options, right? You can uh, all in them. You can make stables and barracks and just go for like... Or, I mean, I wouldn't suggest archer rangers against French because they go knights. So you can go like stables, barracks, and all in them instead with better economy. You can go for naked castle, aka castle with no units, and then go into castle knights while they have feudal knights. Or you can just play defensively with like uh, archer spearmen or knight spearmen or knight archer and try to basically defend your economy while you have 2TC going on. That is up to you. Late game, it's not even a, a you know a competition. You will completely demolish French because you have Streltsy and their main thing is cavalry and Streltsy crap on cavalry pretty bad. Rus versus Rus, it, it's actually interesting. This matchup is very focused on getting the boar. So there's going to be situations where both of you get the boar, like you get one boar, he gets the other. Or there might be a situation where both of you might decide to go for the same boar, in which case you might get fortress rushed or wooden fortress rushed on your boar where your TC is. So it's kind of like Mongol French mix in that situation. And you should kind of play it just like against French. French and Rus are very similar in the terms of units. They have knights and feudal, right? So you can go for an all in from there or you can both go castle. Just remember, just like it's hard to prevent the Rus from going castle, it's also hard to prevent 
Rus in a Rus mirror to go castle. So that's something to pay attention to. And then once you go castle, you know, you just do the stuff I explained earlier, go from there. And obviously late game is equal to both. So next, HRE. HRE is one of the sieves that I would suggest to all in. The reason for that is if you are going for second TC uh, into fast castle, HRE will get faster castle and they're gonna pick up the relics before you and you're gonna be extremely far behind even though you have a second TC. There's no world where HRE will not get faster castle than you, especially if you're going to TC. Even if you go, went straight into castle, you're gonna get it faster. So my advice is if you do go for the two TC build, just make like two stables, uh, or one stable, two, three, four archer ranges, however many, and just all in like the season one boar build, except with a TC, because HRE will get to, to castle eventually, but the thing is your economy will keep growing and you'll be able to deny relics and deny food sources. And once HRE runs out of food sources, that's where you'll be more free to go to your own castle and play the game from then on out. So don't let HRE play on their own. Late game, uh, I mean, they're infantry civ and you have Strelzi, so it's very good for you. Rus is in general very good civ in the late game. DC. DC. Next one, Delhi. Delhi has their upgrades delayed, right? Their researches are very slow. So they're not gonna really be able to make a ram and just kill your TC forehead. This is a matchup where I love putting my TC around the sacred side. Like if there's a boar or deer pack next to sacred side, 100% put your second TC there because not only you're denying a sacred site, you're also getting food, which is perfect case scenario. Other than that, Delhi has a massive timing in castle with elephants. And I would probably suggest to just try to deny their uh, relics, deny their sacred sites. That's what you want to focus on. You should be able to arrive in castle, maybe even faster than them, even with the second TC, because you will be denying the one sacred site. And once you do that, try to get relics and try to use your knights to deny their relics and deny their gold income as much as possible. Uh, Delhi's strongest point is the tower elephants, which are the ranged elephants. And if you deny gold mining, relics, sacred sites, they don't have gold for them. They cost 600 gold each. So that is your main focus. Remember that archers and crossbows uh, don't do a lot of damage. Uh, tower elephants have like seven base armor against ranged attacks. So you're gonna need melee units to deal with them. So like spearmen or, or knights or horsemen. Delhi Imperial doesn't really exist. The main thing to look out for is their castle. Uh, Chinese is a sieve that you should have no issues in getting the second TC for free. They're most likely going to be booming as well. And if they go for the 2TC boom and you go for 2TC boom uh, into castle, you have two options. You either go into castle and get the relics and that's where you get your advantage, right? You, you both have two TCs except they have a little bit of extra villager production because of song but you're gonna have relics that are gonna help you kind of balance that out and you can go for sacred side win or you can just get a second TC and all in them because uh, China is very difficult to play and if you force them to fight in feudal and you know you build rams and force them to fight they will run out of food eventually and they're one of the worst saves to go out on the map and get food so if you manage to get to a point where they run out of food and they have to move to deer packs or something uh, you should be able to get the win because you're the one that's being aggressive and you have full map control plus the board. Uh, late game, I would say it's probably China favored because of Fire Lancers that are very, very good. They're one of the civs that have really insane gold income in the late game because of taxes. And Rus doesn't have stone walls because you're not gonna go for Spaskara Tower Landmark that allows you to build stone walls. And if you don't have stone walls, then uh, Fire Lancers are just gonna run by constantly and just kill everything. So. I'd probably say China's favorite in the late game. Doesn't mean it's impossible, but I would favor Chinese. In Castle, you can do Sacred Side win, or you can do Mass Siege push, or you can just try to overwhelm them in feudal and make them run out of food. Next one, Ab Acid. Abacid is a boom sieve, so they're most li like 99% of the Abacid players go for second TC. So you're most likely gonna be able to get your second TC for free. Now the difference is Abacid might go for three TC, so that's something that you should keep an eye out. If they go for 3 TC, they're gonna have really, really good economy because Abbasid scales really well with their eco and the worker count. Your goal is still gonna be to get the relics, get into castle, but you'll be met with crap ton of units and potential siege pushes straight away. 
So for example, if you go for a mass horse archer strategy with nothing else, they can make two mangonels with mass spears and they're literally going to just kill you. So one of the things you can do against Abbasid to slow down their mass units is to uh, get a keep the, as soon as you can get into uh, as you, can, you can get it into castle to slow down their push and to kind of hold the map control. And one thing to note, they have camels, so you probably don't want to focus on full cavalry. Uh, that doesn't mean don't make cavalry. That just means that don't go horse archer plus knights because your whole army is going to be 20% damage debuffed, which is a lot of damage. Uh, that you're gonna be losing so if you manage to survive to late game Abbasid is actually not bad in the late game because uh, camel archers deal quite well with Streltsy but uh, you're probably still gonna have uh, an advantage there so uh, I would say most of the fighting versus Abbasid will happen in feudal or sorry in castle one thing to note if you do go for two TC and they go for three you can just all in them if you guys remember from the season one build order guide with Rus that I've made the strongest push from Rus with the boar was against Abbasid because they had a very hard time dealing with it and if you go 2 TC into all in they're still gonna have a very hard time dealing with it so that's another uh, option for you that you can do and that is pretty much for Rus season 2 I think I've mentioned everything if I didn't you can always ask if you're watching on YouTube or if you're watching on Twitch I'll try to answer some questions but i think that is it for now again there's a bunch of guides from get good with beastie to actual build order guides with each season so that is something that you guys can uh check out if you're interested the next guide that i will be making is most likely going to be abbasid into delhi into hre into china so abbasid is most likely next if you're watching this on youtube i want to thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed today's stream if you're watching on twitch let's keep going